Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. It's time for. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy long-time corner business that takes up two buildings and they've they've been open for a long time and they're open now um, this owner began after they bought the business in the buildings began the demolition in the upstairs floor to fix up the apartments and it turned out he couldn't get the permits because he didn't have private parking and now for 25 years those upper floors had sat oh wow well, one what, while there was a shortage of uh, so no revenue coming in. Let, well, plus there was a shortage of housing in Fairboat too. Yes, yeah. So there was there's just so many um, spaces that are, they're in the process right now. I mean, I think about where Redemption Restaurant is. Just recently, those two upper floors were turned into apartments, and they're filled. They're they're filled up. Um, I think about Tim Allison and Jen Denmark's buildings and um, what they did. Um, they've they put two nice little condos in their um, double two story yeah. apartments, right? They split wow. it in the middle and have an upstairs and downstairs in each of the two huh. uh, pants they've got there. They're just gorgeous and and they're full. Um, and one of the things that helped that, and it was a great parking committee that came together. I mean, there's um, people that had a lot of history downtown. I mean. Um, I think about Carl and Ann uh, Voss, and I think about Larry Harn. They were part of this committee. Uh, Jana Viscomi, myself, and a few others, um, analyzing how can we work on the best parking solution as all of us are in the process of lifting this downtown. And we know to have that happen, we have to have the right kind of parking both for residents and for customers. And here's a classic example of back in the day, the parking restrictions of the permits, they made what they thought was the best decision at yes, that like time. You say, I'm not and now it doesn't work anymore. So let's try and figure out how we can change it to make it work better. Exactly right. We, and like, we had a great group <coughs> for that parking committee. And, and you know, we actually weren't necessarily acutely aware of that ordinance. Um, but as we processed that and spoke with some people that their their building renovations had been held up for years and years and years because they couldn't find private parking to purchase to have their tenants have. So we, we made a plea to get that changed because as building owners, it's really awkward to buy a two or three story building and then say, oh, by the way, you can't use those upper floors, but we're still gonna tax you yeah. on that and hold you to um, Historic Preservation uh, Commission yeah. standards when you're not pulling the revenue in yeah. off of those. So because the, it all has to work together. It does, it does. So what what the group came up with, and there, you know, and what I really love is it really was the whole group. There wasn't one person pushing everything, right? The group came to this great conclusion that, well, we need to not have that ordinance in the way that it is. So instead, if you do not have parking for your building. Let's say I've got two apartments on my two-story building and I don't have parking spots in the back that I can dedicate to them. Then you are allowed, your tenants get a permit from the city for a modest fee and they get to park in the 18-hour lots. The city has many of those around and they're never full. So So now the building owners can fix up their apartments. The tenants have a spot in the 18 hour lots that they're not, they don't have to adhere to the 18 hour yeah. rule with their tag. Cause they've got a parking tag or something Correct. so that they. Yep, they're a downtown resident. Yeah. They should have a spot where if they go on vacation or they're home for the weekend and don't want to go anywhere, they don't have to go move their car every, you know, 18 yeah. hours. 
So that was And a they great have a solution. place to park their car in snow emergencies. Yes, and they that's right. To- so it, that's an example of uh, one of the things that has happened from a from a cooperative efforts with the city. Um, hey, by the way, you know Beth Ayat? No, I Service don't. master, she's ringing oh, yes. me right now. Oh, hey, yeah, that bad. <laughs> I won't answer the phone, but yeah, they've got a great business, They're awesome chamber members. So I'll tuck that aside yeah. here. Um, anyway, uh, one of the other ordinances that changed, um, they weren't allowing any kind of manufacturing on the retail floors. You know, save like a like a goldsmith, like a jewelry yeah. store or sewing, but anything. Um, if somebody was doing any kind of thing beyond uh, uh, typical retail, you know, putting flower bouquets yeah, together, yeah, or doing yeah. jewelry, bakery, a restaurant, you couldn't like, let's just say make bird houses or do any sort of light um, fabrication, um, bottle hot sauce. I, I was exactly okay. thinking that so, crybaby craze because they might have bigger kettles and stuff uh, that they're so making. They, w- they wouldn't have been allowed. Okay, that kind of manufacturing wouldn't have been allowed. And it's a lot of the same characters that worked on the parking, okay, that, that group worked on this whole idea that, well, let's, let's create uh, an environment where crafters uh, can come in um, and, and set up a retail space and then do their work in the back, yeah. right? Not unlike Burkus Myers where yeah. they're working on shoes, yeah. you know, the repair shop. Um, but other things that formerly weren't allowed as long as they weren't too intrusive with odor yeah. or noise, noise or, or vibration. That's yeah. a big one with some of that equipment. That can really be disturbing to neighbors as yeah. well if you've got, you know, really loud and, and big printing presses yeah. as an example. Um, so that was also also changed, which allowed, like you say, a crybaby Craig's to come in. We've got actualized fabrication is in a building downtown. Um, so these are things outside of the investments that have been made that are also happening, allowing... Policy or government changes and regulations that need to be changed to make it more conducive. Right. And, and the, the, they weren't, there weren't, a, there weren't uh, conversations about we did something wrong at a time. It's not that at all. It's times are a-changing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. We've got the retail, the retail thing, and as much as people lament it, and I do on the weekends, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just can't believe can't go down and get this or that sometimes. And it's because it, there's this evolution of the small stores as times have changed. Communication has changed in the yeah. same way. And and the very idea that, you know, downtown was where you went. It was yeah. the bakery. We've talked yeah. about those, all those businesses. And as, um, as the initial surge in shopping malls, the Burnsville Center was the first yeah. big one around here, right? And yeah. now... Uh, they they did definitely draw businesses because you could be under one roof. And especially in a climate like Minnesota, people kind of liked that. Yeah. And I don't blame them. You yeah. can go in and you can go to the theater, get something to eat, get your shoes, uh, shop around. And there you did it all under one roof. Yeah. And those were the malls. Well, now... You know, the malls aren't doing so great yeah. with Amazon. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand that, but maybe that makes me old-fashioned. So I so I'm going to sit and stare at a silly computer screen to buy things and have Amazon deliver it. But fairly a lot of people do. But it so. is right. <laughs> yeah, I, like you say, we can sit around and whine all day yeah. long, or we can understand what the circumstances are and try and figure out how we can fit. But how, how do we best yeah. fit and prosper in this evolution in the downtown? It's it's requiring a new business model for the buildings. They, we have to get the occupants in yeah. there. And then the businesses need to be things that you can't get on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. So it needs to be experiences. It do you needs think to I be could fresh should, food? Do you think I should could have set my coat that was perfectly fine and looked classy, even for me, other than it needed a zipper? Put that in a box and ship it back to Amazon. Say, here, somebody fix it. <laughs> you know, I. I suppose somebody has yeah, that some, going on, yeah, but I sure but, feel good that you can yeah. walk down and, you know, get a get a cup of coffee at Jessica's yeah. shop there. And um, Sue's Clum still has her glass garden beads. I think yeah. there, she's in the basement. But here, going here's what's, on. what's cool about how government is supposed to work. Yes. And 
local government, that means citizens can have an impact. Sure, we have an impact supposedly in St. Paul or Washington, D.C., but the farther away it gets from where you live, it seems like it can, you get lost in the shuffle. But this is classic. Uh, you know, we can talk to the mayor. We can talk to city council members, the president of the chamber. We come together and figure out how to fix it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I'll tell you, the, the cooperation um, currently is, is outstanding. And um, I'll give you a couple of examples. First, I'm going to give you the one from just last week. We had a group together. That oh, met. can you save that? Oh, we got a report I gotta to do. I got to do a market report. Better hit your market get report. Get me carried I'll away. You're trying to get back. me in trouble, Nort. <laughs> Go ahead, <Jim. laughs> We'll pick it up after the market break. Sponsored by the KDHL Agri Boosters. They include Craig Keller over at the Keller Insurance Agency in Near Strand. And, of course, Craig does help protect all things important and valuable to you. Soybeans are up in the early going on Wednesday. Corn's down. Cattle and hogs are mostly lower. I'm John Perkins with a Brownfield Market Update. For decades, Stein has represented simply the best in corn genetics, offering more than 50 lines of the highest performing corn, featuring a broad range of traits. Stein has yield. Soybeans are up this morning, seeing a bounce after yesterday's losses with help from a higher move in bean oil. Rains delay in planting in parts of the United States and harvest in portions of South America. July beans are up one and three quarters, 1164 and three quarters. August is three quarters higher at 1166 and a quarter. July bean meals down four dollars fifty cents at 347.40. July soybean oils up 40 points at 4341. Corn's down, watching the U.S. planting delays and the warm, dry weather impacting Brazil's second crop and the rain delay in Argentina's corn harvest. Domestic supply bearishness is partially canceled out by solid ethanol and export demand. July's down two and a half at 444 and a quarter. September's three lower at 452 and three quarters. And wheat's lower. Weather, uh, it remains technically overbought and the trade's largely ignoring weather issues. Even then, any significant upside would be limited by the slow export demand. May Chicago's down four and a half at 599. On another round of fund liquidation, July uh, cotton's down 180 at 76.63. October's down 71 at 76.55. And nearby rice is up, adjusting spreads. July's 22 higher at 19.50, and September's a half higher at 15.21. Live and feeder cattle are mostly lower ahead of widespread direct business. Asking prices are at 186 live. June live's up 60 at 175.57. August is 12 higher at 173.22. August feeders are 25 lower, 255.25. And hogs are mostly lower on spread trade and profit taking, with June down 52 at 101.97 and July 22 lower at 105.20. Crude oil's lower this morning as well. John Perkins, Brownfield. The first three years of every child's life are critical. Learn more about early intervention. How your baby or toddler plays, learns, talks, acts, and moves give important clues as to how they are developing. If you have any questions or concerns about whether your baby or toddler's development is on track, please call 1-800-515-BABY. That's 1-800-515-2229. Call 1-800-515-BABY. That's 1-800-515-2229. I see you finally got a new helmet. I did. Bought it cheap online. Follow me. We'll turn off here. I'm right behind you. Watch the cars. They can be crazy. Patty! No! Are you okay? Somebody do something! Uh, uh, Was this young man hit by a car? Yes, and his helmet is smashed. It's a brand new helmet. It's probably a fake. Fakes cause real harm. You're smart. Buy smart. Brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council and the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. AM Minnesota on the Mighty 920 KDHL. The market update sponsored by the KDHL Agro Boosters, including Northern Buildings. For quality post-frame construction, check out their website, northernbuildings.com. My guest on today's AM Minnesota program, Nort Johnson, Executive Director of the Fairboat Chamber of Commerce. All right, before I rudely interrupted you, Nort, you're going to tell a story about what happened last week. But we were yeah. talking before the break about how citizens involved with the city council and you could the cooperation get things is fixed. at a very high point right now. So what I, uh, I, I wanted to share that um, last week, there's, there's one, of our, um, one of our major companies in town um, that's uh, got some opportunities and some changes uh, coming up. And um, lo- they were looking for some input. 
And you know who showed up? The county showed up. The mayor showed up. Our new city administrator and EDA director showed up. The chamber was there. The industrial corporation was there. And wow. yeah, this, so this group came together, met with this company, and you know, working hard to make sure that their needs are met, um, and that we're that, and that we're all on the same page on things. So that's that's the way things should yeah. work. It was it was uh, you kind of get goosebumps in that room, right? And there's something else, and I think this is good. Anybody that's paying taxes um, should know about this because it is super positive. So the chamber. Um, and this this is uh, this started in 2019, 2018, uh, put some priorities in place uh, that we were going to try to help with, right? And one of them was leadership collaboration across the board in in Faribault and Rice County, so everybody's on the same page. Well, we'll be hosting our fifth or sixth now, just coming up. I think it's end of May. They're joint boards meetings, Jerry. Ooh. So we've had it. The, we've had the last couple of them at the senior center. Um, so imagine, if you will, you're paying taxes. All these people, right? The school board, mm-hmm. the city council, the county commission, the economic development authority, and the housing and rehabilitation authority. So all those boards plus their administrators. So Jamie Bente from the school district, Sarah Folstead from the county. Tim Murray from the city, um, Dave Womberg from the EDA and HRA, and then our chamber executive committee and our vision task force members. And we talk about what's most important, how are we all doing on it, and how can we do better? And how can we do better by yes, pooling what's, together? What's, exa- what's hot on your agenda? Yeah. What's going on here? What's the? And at first it was a little awkward because... Um, from what we understand, that had that whole group it hadn't happened before getting them all at the same table, and I can tell you that we had uh, three of the county commissioners after uh, two meetings ago said, you know, hey, is there any way that the chamber would pull these meetings together quarterly because these are really good? <laughs> wow, so that's, that's a that's yes. A... So this so um, and uh, I, I need to toot my chamber's horn, obviously, a little bit on that. Um, but um, that's not what it's about. What it's about is the collaborative efforts, they lead to accelerated results. So mm-hmm. things that would normally maybe have to, you know, they'd be here and then you'd talk here and then you'd go over here one with step it. At, one slow step at a time. <laughs> you, you start, you, you get together and you can find out what the obstacles are or concerns or opportunities from each of the entities um, angle on things. They all have different responsibilities, yeah. right? right? I mean, yeah. they just do. And, and they're big responsibilities. Um, but they you know, their paths cross a lot. Yeah. And when it comes to things uh, like uh, projects, zoning, partnerships for organizations that benefit all three of those county or the city, county, school district, right? How can we all cooperate together to have best outcomes? And um, you know, we've talked about daycare and early education. We've talked about housing. And you mentioned something last week I never thought of: daycare at night. Yes. For you know the. The, that's that's a huge need yeah. and one of the projects and uh, I can say that Dave Wanberg from the city and Sarah Folstead from the county have been all in helping us out with this project that we that the chamber's been putting together and um, we've got a, a separate group working on that Cassie from our office is uh, the lead on that and it's it's going well but yeah the one of the charges from that were we we're a 24/7 yeah. manufacturing yeah. town and Daycare needs exist during that entire time. It's kind of cool that there's so much cooperation and working together because I think that, unfortunately, is a little unusual. You always hear in the news about different segments of local government always locking horns and yeah. egos getting in the way and, and it does those happen. sorts of things. And it does happen. I uh, One of my fellow uh, uh Chamber presidents um, has some things going on in their community that I have a, a personal experience with on bo- both on the city council side. I did that for ten years, oh, you know, and, know on the, and on the chamber side. Uh, and we uh, we were able to 
kind of go through those things um, to help that community out, right? Yeah. And that, that's a nice thing about networks and about yeah. oh, operating. Yeah. We're running out of time already. Yeah, I Jerry. know. Yeah. Only about so, two and a half minutes left, but you'll be scheduled again. But, all right. But well, what, what's fun about the AM Minnesota program like this is the history of that parking and can explain it in detail about why it was put in place. And boy, they made a good decision at the time, but now things change. Yes. And the cooperation of all different aspects of local government working together. It, it, it is happening and it's, it's very rewarding. We've got good people both in the elected spots and on in the administrative spots. And and then the appointed citizens too and a lot of those different A bunch of those committees. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, Hey, we, we we have some chamber <laughs> stuff too. Yeah. Yep, that, and uh, all right, let's get a plug in for the website because all the stuff we were supposed to be talking about, yes. the activities is all, I'm sure, on Yeah, fairboltmn.org. And uh, we've got some Facebook presence as well. Just look up Fairbolt Chamber. Um, car cruises are in for full roll again this year. But we have a change for the downtown car cruises. We oh. have live bands. Oh, that's right. You mentioned yes. that. So um, we'll have one. One will be uh, by the State Bank down here. Uh, on one night, we're going to have one uh, by the Elks Club in our place on 3rd and that block. We'll have another one down by, well, it would be Signatures in Jana and the Crooked uh, Pint, okay, yeah. that area. So we'll move that around. We've got different sponsors for those. Um, the big event down at Tipe Tonka Park on August 2nd and 3rd, it's going to be supersized this year. The music is going to be out of this world. Yeah, yeah it's a really big yeah, National some, band? yeah. Oh, our the Saturday night lineup is uh, the the uh, headliner is a band out of Texas. Uh, we got him through. We got that band through some relationships. Set a couple. Is of Is that what you know? It's who you know. It does <laughs> shake out that time. They're called Back in Black. It's the premier world premier ACDC tribute band. For them, we've got a, 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 it's a show. It's called the Disco Kings. Oh, it's like an eleven piece group with the outfits and the afros, the oh. whole thing. And then bell prior bottom to that, pants too. <laughs> they'll have that. They'll have the bell bottoms and the elevator shoes, the whole thing. And then the um, um, old country boys oh, wow. before that. So that that's the last three acts on Saturday. Now in the morning, it's going to be the big car show yeah, with yeah. the car club down there. One of these car shows is, that too. is going to have Louise's red Mustang in it. But then, Very good. <laughs> thanks for coming in, Nort. Jerry, thanks a bunch. Nort Johnson, Executive Director of the Fairboat Chamber of Commerce. Here's national news from ABC. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.